this is portal.azure.com, right? So I have this account myself. This is my personal account. And this is, you see, pencilishwar at hotmail.com. This is my personal account. Um, and one of the fortunate guys still have hotmail account, which I created, I believe, 20 years back. 20, at least, yeah, 20 years back. Still, I have it. Uh, well, that's what I'm using for this uh, demo. And you see here, this is uh, my subscription. It's a free sub subscription. And I, as I said last week, I activated it. So that means you see there's no data I'm using from any any or client or anybody's. It's my personal. And um, in that, uh, I have first thing first, we create a resource group. And here, PNAC RG resource group. Okay, this is something private to me, resource group. I have created in that I have created all the things. So after you create, you can create it. How to create a resource group? Go to here and maybe directly actually you can, if you want, create a resource or you just click it here, go to resource group and you can actually create a new one either way. Okay. So let's go and do it from beginning as if. So go to click here, go to resource group. And create a one. I don't want to create one, but here you give a name, test RG, and you can actually create in the which region you want to create. There are various regions in uh, around the world. You can create in any one of the regions. Okay, that is the resource group. Resource group is nothing but a construct like a folder where everything is actually wrapped up. It is a abstract. Uh, it's just it's kind of highest level of abstraction okay obviously subscription is the account that then you need this is the resource group is the highest list of abstraction is you see collection of resources resource group is a collection of resources that share the same life cycle permissions and policies okay so it's like a folder where all the files are there okay uh, this i have already created that one i'll not create anymore so Let's then go to Azure Migrate. I'll straight away go to here. Azure Migrate. And you can always search it here if you don't want to. Just call Azure Migrate. If you check it here, it will come here. Now, in that, when you are doing first time, just click Azure Assess and Migrate. If you say, sorry, Discover Assess and Migrate. Here, it will ask you to create a project because I have already created. So project is issue. This is the project. Migrate test. This is the project I have created. Because last time it took a lot of time, so I will actually run through it today because we don't have so much of time to actually create a new project and you know, do everything. So uh, that's why I have, you see, I have created it. Okay. Something downloading. What is that? Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the project I have created. Once you created the project, this part, this two will appear. One is the assessment tool, another migration tool. So you can use either one. First one is anyway for ded dedicatedly for assessment of on-premise applications. So you can anyway, you have to go through the discover. Either you can click here, discover the first one, or you can create because uh, I am cre creating for migration. So I actually clicked here, discover both are, both are the same anyway. So I created the discover. And when you click it here, it will come as which is the your environment with VMware vSphere hypervisor or Hyper-V. This is from Microsoft and this is from VMware or any physical. You can choose because I have a VMware, I have chosen this one. Migration type, agent list application. You can create anyone with agent or without agent. So this is what I have, I'm doing it without agent because I'm not going to install any separate agent on each server. And agent based means you have to go and install agents in every application, okay? Or every every server, all the VMs should have the agent which is normally not preferred because 
if you have thousands of servers, then obviously you cannot go and install in, um, thousands of VMs rather. You have to install like thousands of agents. So that's normally uh, old, but now agent less replication preferred. Now, then this page will appear and here you have to create a key, new key, which will actually used for registering your appliance, which we are about to download. So I have already created a key. See, manage the existing appliance. So if you see here, I have actually an existing one and the key is actually I have already created for this appliance and I don't want to show it, but I have already a, a key created, okay? So that is because it's already discovered and all. So you can go again and discover and hypervisor and agents less, and you can create a key. And then either you can download this OB file, which I think last time we saw, I downloaded this, but you can also download this zip file, which is actually an installer. You can create a new VM, Windows VM, and you can create actually download this 50 MB file and install it so that it becomes the VM, which is uh, the actual VM, which will actually help in migrating, or you can download this OVA, which is a ready-made, okay, ready-made one. Anyway, I have this OVA one, and I have shown you how to actually, once you download this file, the OVA file, you create the key, download the OVA, and then go to your vCenter server, and here, then you can actually, you see here, deploy OVF template. So click that, then give local file. The OVF file has to be uploaded, like click upload file. If you see here, I have, this is the OVA. If you see here, it's 12.59 gig, 12.59 gig. So this is the OVA file. You can select and open it. And then next, 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 you can go and uh, let, let me show you what are the, for the record, because we are recording open. Once you open it, you can go to next and click the data center, which you have next. The same name already exists, okay? So I will not go, but it will it will ask you the compute storage and ready to compete and you can just implement it. So I have already implemented based on the, that. And this is Azure my as uh, Microsoft Azure migration. This is the OVA open virtualization appliance. OVA means okay that I have downloaded and that resulted in this VM. I just I can and once you run first time, actually it will ask you to set up a admin password, which I have already done. So I have set up that administration password. Now it is better at this point, once this is running, then it's better you access the, because this is outside that VM, right? So now you log into that particular VM. It is good because I'll tell you exactly why. 50, uh, let me log in and what is the IP address I got for that VM? The appliance VM I'm talking about. So you see here the appliance is 60. Here the IP address of that VM is 60. So I will, uh, this is the appliance. I will remote log into that, to the appliance. And this is what I get. So now, because this is a Windows VM anyway, I can uh, access the Azure from here also, the same thing. And I'll tell you this has got little advantage than if you access because there are some copy paste we have to do. So directly work here, it's better. Now, when you start the VM first time, actually this particular, app, this is the application. You see here Azure, let me pull it here. Azure Migrate Appliance Configuration Manager. If you see here, this will run in the first time. Or you can double click here to run it manually too. Once it runs, it will open in the browser this particular page. I believe if you remember, we did it last time. Okay, so here, because it will take time, it, all this checkup will happen. It will take really 
at least 10 to 15 minutes. So I don't want to do that. I'll, I'm going to use the existing page. If I just refresh it, actually it will take an, uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes. So I don't want to do it. So you, if you want to rerun it, always you can double click this and it will start running. In the first, first time, it will actually run by itself. Okay, so this will check all the things like if there is a connection happening between the, this appliance and Azure, then it will do a time sync and then it will ask latest updates and installed. And this is this will fail initially because we need to actually do that. You need to separately download this kit. It will give instruction how to do it. If you installation instruction, if you click it here, it will open a page and it will tell exactly what to do. I have already done that and it is nothing but you download this file. If you see here, I downloaded a file. This particular file. OK, Dix live and you op, uh, extract the contents to a program data. And Microsoft Azure. Config. That's all it is actually you have to just copy. Um, I'm sorry, not that. Not that I'm sorry. This is I'm talking different. So VMware this kit. Okay, so uh, or you just click it here. Uh, it's better if you can click it. Installation instruction. I don't know actually. OK, let me check. OK, here it is. OK, you see here download. It gives a link. C program files VMware. OK, it is in C program files. C program files VMware and here. Right. Here you have to copy the contents of the downloaded file. If you download, this will go to VMware for actually. If you click it here, it will open the VMware page and it will ask you to download this and this needs a login and you can create a temporary login <clears throat> and you can download this and you ex this is the zip file if you see this is this is the zip file extract it and extract it to here so that's all um, and this is obviously helps in some of the VMware tasks which is required for while migrating okay anyway so that that's something first then you register it in the second stage. If you register with Azure Migrate, and the key, if you remember, which we created initially, if you click here, discover the one I just want to show what that key is actually used. Right? I asked, I said, generate key, right? So that you should have already copied. Then you copy that key here and do a login. And so you do that login, then it will give you it will give you a token to copy. And you copy that token, and then it will also ask you to log in from the same browser, or you copy this uh, you log in from another browser and copy this token. Because if you're not in the same VM, then you have to re-log in again and copying again because this is a VM. Sometimes copy and paste from outside may not be allowed. So if you're directly doing here in the same VM, it will be copy and paste will be easier. That's the reason I said do it from the same VM so that you are accessing the appliance and Azure from the same VM. So that will be easier. So if you see here, I have already logged in as this and this appliance being successfully registered. And you can check it here, the same one, uh, Azure Migrate. If you see here, uh, go to discover access. Last time, which it took time, right? If you see here, appliance is one, which is actually registered. Without registration, this will not show. See, you see here, registered appliance is one. And this is the key which I created. And this will give all these details of this particular appliance. Once this, you see here, these details, same thing. Machine ID is this, you can check it. If the missing ID is here or not, I think it's not giving here, but uh, these are the details of the same. 
So resource group is RG migrate key and you check it here. Is it migrate key? Yes. So this is migrate key. The plant's name. OK, maybe I have given a wrong name. It is actually taken by default a key, so it is actually migrate appliance. But anyway, that's uh, simple a name. OK, well, uh, that's all. And then once you do that, registration is complete. Because this will take really uh, at least uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes minimum it will take 30 minutes and complete discovery also it will take another 15 minutes. So it is completely this pays one hour almost. It will easily take more than one hour. So I don't have to do all those things here. I have already done it. So in, in fact, this morning I did it. Before our uh, call. Uh, uh, scrum uh, call we did it. So. It is registered once it's registered and it is success, then only you can move to three and then here it will ask how this will communicate to the vCenter server because vCenter server is the ultimate management server. So you give this if you see here, edit it and given and this is the option only have a have vCenter server, I give a name as vCenter and I give the username and I give the password. So and it is taken now then add discovery source. But you give the just the. Credentials here, but when you add the discovery source, you again give what you just added. The friendly name which actually I gave. That means from the I'll use the vCenter server and I gave the vCenter dot. Dot and you can give the IP address also here if you want. If you have not set up the. DNS name. So you can give this and save it, which I already same thing, exactly the same thing. So once this is done, you can validate it here that yes, this appliance really can communicate to the vCenter server because vCenter server is the ultimate authority to allow any work to be done on VMware environment. Without vCenter server, you cannot do anything on the VMware environment. OK, so that means this uh, this appliance is giving a command to the vCenter server actually to do something. So that's being validated. Then our credential for the servers. If you have VMs, if you see I have Windows VMs and Windows administrators, I have given the Windows uh, admin as administrator and I have given a password to that how to log into individual VMs. And for Linux, I have given root and all the required um, password for the Linux servers because I purposefully have created a Linux server too. And you can Validate the credentials and once this is passed, I have passed those credentials to start the discovery. If I click it here, it will easily take another 15 minutes. I don't want to do that. Start discovery. I have already discovered it. 